Hey everyone, Tim here. Thank you so much for purchasing the Royal Commerce Divi Child theme. I'm excited to show you how to get it all set up and configured so that you can start using it and, and building out your store or a store for your client, uh, whatever the purpose was for purchasing this child theme. So um, as you can see here, I have the Royal Commerce demo up on my screen. And so at the end of this video, if you follow along, your website will look just like this demo, except for you'll have some placeholder images instead of these product images here. And so um, in order to do this, I'm going to be f uh, following along the PDF documentation. So essentially, you have two choices of um, how you want to follow along installing the theme. One is to watch this video like you're doing, or two is to read this document. So I'm essentially just going to be demonstrating and showing you step by step all of the installation and activation instructions that are part of this document. And so I've set up a fresh WordPress install that is um, essentially bare. There's not really any content. I just have a couple of, of plugins that I install on every website as well as, of course, the Divi theme. So the first thing that you're going to want to do is install and activate the Royal Commerce child theme. And so uh, if you're watching this video, more than likely you've already unzipped the download package. And so inside this folder, you have a couple different things. First thing is the Royal Commerce zip file. That's the actual child theme. And then this folder here, import files. This has all the content, the layouts, the customizer settings, the theme options, the widgets, and then the plugins, a couple plugins that are bundled with the child theme. And so I'm gonna go over here back to my demo website and I'm going to click on add new to install the Royal Commerce child theme. So I'm going to click upload theme, choose file. I'm going to choose the zip file here and click install now and click activate. So now Royal Commerce is now activated on my site. However, there's quite a few things that we need to do to get it looking like the demo. And so that's the purpose of this video here. So the first thing we're going to want to do is install the necessary plugins. So um, you may already have WooCommerce installed on your website. If so, then you don't need to do this, but I'm going to go ahead and do this here. And uh, just to be clear, here's the list of all the plugins that you want to install on um, the website here. So you can copy and paste them from here. You can type them in directly. I'm gonna go ahead and get this ready to go. That's the next plugin I'm gonna install. So here's WooCommerce. I'm gonna click Install Now. And then I'm gonna click Activate to activate the WooCommerce plugin. Now as soon as you activate WooCommerce, it goes to this little wizard to walk you through some setup. So I'm gonna quickly go through it. Um, the important thing is you want it to create the pages, the shop, the cart, the checkout, the My Account page. So make sure you, you allow it to do that and hit continue. And then the other settings on here, it's really just going to depend on your store, where you're located, uh, the currency that you're using. So I'm just gonna leave everything default and just click through to continue, but you can spend more time on this and figure out how you wanna set up your store. And you can always do what I'm doing and hit continue just to get through the the, uh, the setup and then you can go back and configure it later and configure those settings uh, from within WooCommerce in, inside your, your WordPress admin. So now I'm gonna click return to the WordPress dashboard and then I'm gonna go back to plugins, add new. The next plugin is the advanced Ajax product filters for WooCommerce. So I already had that copied, so paste it in here. Now if you copy directly from my uh, PDF document and then in, it's always gonna be this first plugin here so you don't have to go through and figure out which one it is. So I'm gonna click install now. Activate. I'm copying the next plugin here from the list. Go to add new. I'm just gonna go through these fairly quickly but you're essentially just going down the list, installing the plugins. So uh, Royal Commerce has special integration with all of these plugins and so all the styling is done um, inside the the child theme so you don't have to make it look good that's already done for you we just have to install the plugin and then the last part of this video I'm going to show you uh, there's a couple settings you just have to turn on that, that that's not able to be carried over so I'm going to click activate here 
copying the next one from my list on my other screen here. Plugins add new, paste in widget importer and exporter, install now, activate plugin. Well, that activates copy and pasting from my other screen here. Add new. So I apologize, this part's a little boring here. Click install now for the WooCommerce image zoom. Activate plugin. And then I'm copying the last one. You can just, for image zoom, you can just click dismiss this notice. They're just trying to upsell you to their premium version, which is, is not necessary. Click add new. I'm going to paste in the last plugin name, which is the Yith WooCommerce wishlist, which is the wishlist functionality that's integrated into the Royal Commerce Child theme. Click install now. Activate plugin. Don't need to go through that. Click dismiss. So on the documentation page, the next thing is to upload, install, and activate the plugins that are bundled with Royal Commerce. So I'm going to click plugins, add new. Now at this time I'm going to click upload plugin. Choose file. So here's the plugins folder. Now I'm just going to go through and do these uh, one at a time here. Divi logo swap. Install now. So that adds the secondary logo on scroll, which is uh, my plugin actually. Activate plugin. Same thing, add new. Upload plugin. Next one on the list, which is the Quick View Pro. Now, one thing to keep note of is all of these plugins are, all these features, I should say, are modular. So if you decide you don't want Quick View, you don't have to install this plugin and activate it. Um, but you're going to want to use uh, a different homepage layout than the default one that's on the um, show you here. So this is obviously. Um, I'm sorry, the carousel. So if you decide you don't want to use the carousel, the slider here, the product slider, you don't have to. You're just going to want to use this homepage layout here, uh, which is no layout or which is no sliders. It's just a grid. It doesn't it doesn't rotate. Um, so keep that in mind as you're you're going through installing these. Uh, none of these are mandatory. None of these plugins are mandatory for Royal Commerce Child theme to operate and function. Uh, these are just um, added features and so everything is modular so you can turn them on and off as as you go. And so we just need to upload one last plugin here which is the carousel that, that's what I just showed you on the demo site. Choose install now. Now I'm going fairly quickly just to make this video as short as possible for you. However feel free to pause the video rewind if you need to, to watch me do it again. Okay, so now that we have the child theme installed, we have the plugins installed, the next thing we need to do is import the content. So to do that, uh, the first thing we're going to want to do is navigate to Tools, Import. And so this is the bulk of the content that we'll be importing. So we're going to click on WordPress here. Now you may already have this installed, you may not. If you don't, just click Install Now activate plugin and run run importer if you already had the plugin installed then when you clicked import it just went directly to this screen here so now what we're going to do is choose the file so we're going to go back here and click import files and the file that we want to import right now is all content so it's just all content .xml. click choose upload file and import now it automatically pulls a username from the site that I used to build Royal Commerce. Um, you don't want to necessarily import that username. So what you can do is just select the username that you already have. So for this uh, demo website, my username is Strifler. So I just want to select Strifler so that it's going to assign all the pages and posts to my username um, or in your case, your username that you have on the site already. Um, and then what we're going to do is click download check that box download and import file attachments so that's going to download all the images so you, you definitely want to check that box there and then I'm gonna hit submit now it's gonna take a second here because it's actually downloading files from the internet and so you can see here it's still loading so give it just a second and then yep 
there it goes. So everything was imported successfully except for these two because they already existed, which is the Hello World blog post, which is the default WordPress blog post, and then the sample page uh, title, sample page. So that's okay because we don't need those anyways. Um, so we're done importing the bulk content. Now the next thing we need to do is a couple of basic settings. You may have this done already, but uh, by default uh, with WordPress, um, if you go to settings reading, by default the front page displays your latest post because that's the standard blog format. Um, however, we want to have a static page be the front page. So what you're going to do is you're just going to click the radio button here. And just to be clear, we're in settings and then we're reading in the reading settings. And then we're going to select front page, going to click home and click save changes. Okay. Now the next thing we want to do is assign our menu. So when we imported the content, it automatically imported the menus as well. However, they need to be assigned. We need to tell, tell WordPress, tell this website uh, what to where to put what menu. So in under appearance menus, now we're going to select main menu. You don't need to worry about footer menu. Just put select main menu and hit select. So it's going to load the main menu here so we can configure it. And then we're going to assign it to the primary menu theme location. And then just make sure you hit that blue save menu button. And so now the menu's been assigned. Now um, this is a kind of a secondary issue, but I've noticed that for whatever reason, um, the all products isn't linking up correctly. And so uh, to fix that, just follow this in this uh, brief little demo here. Uh, delete the all products menu. And then we're going to re-add it here, which is actually shop, it's the shop page. And we'll reposition it here, drop down, I'm gonna rename it all products and then click save menu. So for whatever reason, when importing the content over, it's links to a broken page and so that's just the way to fix it there is just relink it. Okay, so now what we wanna do is we want to import some Divi layouts. So to do that, navigate to Divi, Divi library, and then click import and export. And now this loads the Divi theme, uh, Divi 2.7 portability settings, which allows you to import and export um, from all areas of the theme. So we're gonna see this screen a couple more times before we're done. So once you click import and export, you wanna um, click that import button here, import tab, and then choose file. And so here's our import files right here. Now for the builder layouts, you want to select the builder-layouts.json file. So just be sure that you're uh, selecting the correct one. It'll probably tell you, uh, it'll give you an error message if you accidentally try to import one of those. So click choose and then click import Divi builder layouts. And so this will be very quickly here. And as soon as you get that green check, just wait a couple of seconds and you'll see it automatically reload the page. And there we go. There's our Divi layouts. We have the, or, uh, the Royal Commerce layouts, I should say. And so now that these are here um, loaded, we need to actually assign them to the right pages. And so what we're going to do is we're going to go over to pages and we want to actually add the layout. So watch if you click home, it's just a blank page. There's nothing here and that's intentional. So we're going to go and click the use the Divi builder. Now we're going to click load from library. And then we want to do add from library because we want to add layouts that are from our library, not the predefined layout. So click add from library. And then here's all of the uh, Royal Commerce Divi layouts that we just imported into the site. And so um, for the home page, you have a couple of choices. I, I mentioned it previously, and it depends on, on whether or not you want to use the product slider. So um, for example, if you want to, let me go back to the demo site here. If you want this homepage to look just like the demo site here with the, the product banner or the category banner here and then the three column product slider carousel, if you want this layout, then 
um, you're going to select this one here, Royal Commerce Home in parentheses with product sliders and click load. However, if you decide that for whatever reason you don't want to use the slider carousels, you just want a simple grid, then um, so an example of that would be home no sliders. So you can see it still has the, the product banners, but there's it's just a three column grid. There's no slider, it's static, it doesn't move. So if you decide you want to use that, then you're going to choose the layout home no sliders and click load. And then lastly, if you love the product sliders and you want more products shown on your page at, at a time, then you can go to home all sliders and for the home all sliders layout, we've ditched the product category banners that were normally part of the grid. And now we have four columns across the slider carousel. So um, if you want this layout, then you just want to choose the home all sliders layout. However, we want to do for this demo, I'm going to do just what's on the, the demo site for Royal Commerce, which is uh, home with product sliders. So I'm going to click load. And now it's loaded here. Now all you have to do is make sure that you click update so it actually um, saves it. So we're good there. So now I'm going to go back to all pages. We just need to add layouts to all of the other pages. So I'm going to go through this very quickly. Um, but feel free to pause the video and, and uh, get caught up. So I'm going to click on blog, use the Divi Builder, load from library, add from library. And now I want to find the blog page here, which is at the bottom. Click load for that. Click update to save the page. I'm going to go back to all pages here. Click on cart. Use the Divi Builder load from library, add from library, find the cart page here, second from the bottom, click load, update the page. And you'll probably notice that my pages are loading very quickly and it's because I'm, I'm doing this on a local dev environment using um, the tool desktop server. I highly recommend it for fast local development. Um, so you might be waiting a little bit longer for your pages to load if you are um, building the site on a live server because you have to save to the internet and go through an internet connection and all that. So um, next page is my checkout page. Actually, checkout page um, does not have a layout. And the reason for that is to make the, the checkout page as simple as possible and eliminate all distractions so that when a shopper, a, a website visitor, is on that page, they're able to um, perform the transaction by the product without getting distracted. And so we want the checkout page to be as simple as possible. So we don't have a layout, just you can just leave the checkout page as is. So now I'm gonna hit contact, add the layout there, use the Divi Builder, load from library, add from library, and find the contact page here, update, Go back to pages. We already did the home page, so we'll skip that. My account. Use the Divi Builder. Load from library. Add from library. Uh, my account's at the top here. Load. Update. Go back to pages. Uh, sample page. I'm just going to delete that. I don't need that. Shop, same thing as checkout. Shop does not have a layout, so you can skip that. However, wishlist does, so click on wishlist. Use the Divi Builder. Load from library, add from library. By the way, by default, this is checked, which will replace the existing content with the loaded layout. If you uncheck that, it will add the layout on top of the existing content. Um, but you don't want to do that um, because with the short codes, you'll start having multiple wish lists, multiple carts, whatever. So just make sure you keep that checked, which it does it by, by default. So wish list, load that, click update. And we are done adding the layouts to the pages. So let's see what is next up on the list. Now we want to do the Divi theme settings. So navigate over to Divi theme options. You can see this is blank. There's no logo, no uh, fave icon. 
and so we want to just add some stuff here so we're going to click on the up and down arrow here which is the import and export icon click import choose file and then now we want to do the theme options so select theme options click choose and then click import Divi theme options it reloads the page here and uh, you'll notice that all this is filled in with logos and all that fun stuff so we are good there now the next thing we want to do is the customizer settings so navigate to Divi theme customizer and same thing you want to click on the import export icon here the up and down arrows you'll notice this still has some work to do that's okay we're gonna click on that import choose file customizer settings so you'll notice there's two customizers one for default and then one is style too I'll talk about that in a little bit I'm gonna leave customizer settings or click on the customizer settings and click choose import let it refresh the page here and you'll notice as soon as this reloads it's getting a lot closer to how we want it to look uh, however one thing um, it doesn't show here uh, but there's some sort of glitch with the customizer and the live preview or whatever but it doesn't carry over some of the settings and so um, if you look at the page right now on the front end of the site you'll notice that there would be a magnifying glass the search icon it would be overlapping one of these and so we just have to do something to, to turn that off so that doesn't happen so to do that click on header navigation then click on header elements check the box for show search icon click save and publish now we're gonna turn it off so uncheck it click save and publish so it's just a glitch it, it'll show it here that it's off but on the front end it'll show that it's on and so we just want to turn it on save it then turn it off save it again so now we can go back we can close out of this so now we want to go to back to the dashboard here and now we're, we're going to import our widgets so go to appearance uh, actually I'm sorry it's under tools widget importer and exporter and we're going to go to choose file widgets dot w i e click choose click import notice green all the way across imported everything successfully however um, it imported all these on top of the default widgets and so we want to go ahead and remove those so navigate over to appearance widgets so these are the default widgets for Divi and so we just need to remove them so just click on it click the delete button do it for the other widgets as well recent posts recent comments deletes archives delete categories delete and meta delete so now we are good to go we have the WooCommerce shopping cart on top and you'll notice fixed widget is checked so it's going to make it sticky so it sticks to the top which is what we want so we are good everything saves automatically via Ajax for widgets and so we are good with widgets for now so a couple more things we need to do so we are in the last section of the documentation so we've installed all the plugins um, installed activated the theme and the plugins um, we've imported all the content and settings and then lastly the last section here is to configure the plugins and so a couple quick things here we don't need to worry about styling because that's already done for you in the Royal Commerce child theme uh, but we do need to do a couple of, of settings so the first thing we're gonna do is navigate to quick view so under Phoenix we want to click quick view and then what we want to do is we want to uh, tick the box for disable quick view on mobile and then click save oh I'm sorry one more setting here we want to uncheck this untick this box for enable product navigation on quick view so just to be clear here you want to check disable quick view on mobile and uncheck the quick view navigation and then click save now we're gonna click on product 
Make sure you add click save though, because uh, when it reloads, it's not going to save. And then under product, we want to uncheck a couple things. We want to uncheck or untick uh, product excerpt. And then we want to untick the show product meta. Then, don't click save yet. Then what we want to do is where it says select thumbnails type, we want to do classic mode. And then now we can click save. You can leave everything else as is. And then now what we want to do is we want to go do some settings for the product slider. So to do that, navigate over to where it says Yith plugins and then click on product slider carousel. And then what we want to do is we want to click the box for enable responsive and then click save. Now for whatever reason, one of the product slider carousels doesn't import correctly and so we need to go and fix that and so click on product slider carousel and you will probably see something that says no title if for whatever reason it's importing correctly for you and you're seeing all of these filled out correctly with the names then um, you don't need to worry about this step here but I'm gonna go ahead and, and do this so I'm gonna click on where it says no title and I'm going to add some settings here. So I'm going to call this the clothing slider. For whatever reason, the clothing slider never imports correctly. Add the category here. So this will add the product category, and then I'm going to leave it on last added. So it'll show them, show the clothing products that were last added first. And then I'm going to leave the template on WooCommerce loop. And then I'm going to uncheck show title. I don't want to show the title. Um, and then I want to do is I want to make it three images per row because remember the default settings for that, that default home page is three columns. And then I want to check the box for loop slider so that it'll continuously scroll. That way you don't have to worry about scrolling to the beginning or anything. It'll just start over and infinitely loop. And then this is preference, but I typically prefer to turn off the autoplay on the sliders, the auto rotation. Um, studies show that visitors find slide, any kind of sliders um, that slide automatically to be annoying and distracting. And so if a user wants to scroll, they can click the button and scroll it or you know, click and drag and scroll it. But I, I turn that off. If you want to leave it on autoplay, that's fine. You can have it on 5,000. Uh, milliseconds which is five seconds um, but I'm just gonna put mine on zero for this demo and then you, you do want to click this box tick this box for display previous and next buttons so that the navigation so when a user hovers over the slider it'll show them the arrows um, signifying that it's a slider and they can uh, click the buttons to scroll now the last thing we want to do is just add the animations to fade in and out so for animation in select fade in Animation out, you want to scroll down to fade out, and you can obviously play with those and, and figure out what works best for you. Now we want to click update. Okay, so a couple more settings here. Now we want to go to apparent settings, click on fixed widget options. And you can just copy um, the image here, the settings that are on that image, um, which is margin top. We want to 85 pixels, margin bottom we want 20 pixels, and then we want to make this turn off at 980 so it won't be fixed on mobile. And then um, we'll go ahead and click save. You can leave everything else as is. Now we want to go over to a WP Image Zoom. That's the, the zoom functionality that's built into the product images on the individual product pages. And if you want to make it look like the, the demo that I, I have set up, then click the X for no lens. That will load the zoom in the same spot as the image so it doesn't load separately. Um, and then I like the crosshairs as the selector here. And then click Save. And then very last, the last thing we need to do to set this up is go over to the Divi Logo Swap, which is my plugin. So under Appearance, click Divi Logo Swap. We just need to add the secondary logo. So I'm going to go to Media Library, and here's the logo right here. Click 
click select. Now obviously you're gonna be adding your own logo or your client's logo or whatever, but I'm just showing you how to set everything up just like the demo. So um, if you are gonna be adding your own logo, um, it's best to have 80, um, 80 pixels high, that, that's preferable. Um, but you can play around and figure out what looks best on that. And so we are done. So now let's go ahead and take a look at it. So um, one thing I'm going to show you in, in my other browser, but um, so this is what your website should look like if you followed all of my instructions. It looks exactly like the demo, except for rather than having the clothing product images, I just have some placeholder images in here for you. And so you can test out the, the slider, slider carousel and see that work. Uh, it also works on a, a click and drag. So for mobile, they can swipe, click quick view. And um, yeah, so everything is working correctly the way we want. Uh, you may notice if you click on all products, the shopping cart, the, so the, the shopping cart is meant to be a sticky shopping cart, so it's always in view. If you're looking at it in the same browser that you're logged into, you'll notice that it doesn't overlap correctly. And that is because of the admin bar at the top. And so you'll notice that, um, grab that URL here. If I copy and paste this and go to a browser that's not logged in, you'll notice it sticks at the proper point and it's because of that admin bar. So just wanted to be clear on that. Now the last thing I wanna show you is uh, how to, if you wanted to use the second demo styling, what you can do is we'll go back over to the theme customizer. So under Divi theme customizer, and we're gonna click import export. Click import, choose the file. Now we're gonna do style two. So we're gonna click choose, and then click import Divi customizer settings. Wait for that to reload here. And so now you have the yellow version. It's a slightly different font, so just a different option um, if you wanted to, wanted to use that. So one thing you will notice though is the sale icons that go over the picture, that's obviously not the same yellow color it's uh, showing from the, the previous version of the styling. And so in order to fix that, and the, by the way, the reason why that's the case is it's kind of a, a glitch within Divi. Divi doesn't let you change the colors for the sale. And so um, there's no way to control it within the customizer. So what you wanna do is you wanna come over to Divi theme options and you'll notice within theme options if you imported everything correctly there's some uh, custom CSS so this isn't the bulk of the custom CSS for Royal uh, Commerce child theme that's saved in the the style.css file but here's um, there's a couple of, of different CSS um, declarations I guess you could say that are, are in this custom CSS box so that you can tweak it on your own. And so uh, the first one is the background color for the on sale tag for products. And so I give you, oops, the, I give you the color under the section for customizer settings. So if you wanna use the styling from the, the demo too, here's that color code, the hexadecimal. You can also grab that from the customizer itself too. And we wanna replace this right here. So if you're using your own color scheme, you can control all the colors and fonts and, and everything from the Divi theme customizer except for that on sale tag has to be controlled from this custom CSS. And so now we'll go ahead, open that up in a new tab. And here we go. Okay, that, that's what I was saying about the, the search icon. For whatever reason, it doesn't like to import correctly. So you just need to fix that. 
in order to fix it just go to header navigation header elements select show search icon hit save Un untick it save it again and then now when we refresh the page you'll notice that it's gone. So this is the, the styling for demo two. You obviously have full control over your website to make it look however you want. This is just an additional option so that you have another choice of, of uh, how your website starts out and then you can go and customize it how you want. So um, I hope this demo was helpful getting you set up and installed with your brand new Royal Commerce child theme. I hope you enjoy it. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me on my website, timstreifler.com. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.